Less than three years ago, Derby County were 90 minutes away from reaching the Premier League, ultimately losing a hard-fought contest with Aston Villa in the Championship playoff final after beating Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds in the semis. But while both of those opponents are now in the English top flight, Derby are not only languishing in the relegation zone of the second tier after being docked 21 points for entering administration and breaching the English Football League's profitability and sustainability rules, but face expulsion from the Football League and the prospect of folding altogether, which would bring an end to the club's 138 year history. The Rams have been looking for new owners since 2019, following years of financial mismanagement under Mel Morris. But after multiple failed takeovers, their efforts have now been hampered by legal challenges from Middlesbrough and Wickham Wanderers, who claim the club held an unfair advantage over them due to their rule breaches, so taking over at Pride Park is less than ideal for prospective buyers. Meanwhile, supporters were recently issued a warning following allegations of abuse and personal attacks directed at the club's administrators. But how did Derby get into such big trouble, who is to blame, and what will happen next? With the future of one of England's most historic clubs in the balance, let's take a look. It's long been known that promotion to the Premier League brings with it the biggest prize money in world football. In 2020, Deloitte reported that the winner of that year's playoff final stood to earn between £135 million and £265 million in extra revenue, depending on the promoted team's ability to stay up the following campaign. Factor in parachute payments, which according to a report by Goal in 2019 are worth up to an estimated £90 million across a two to three year period for those relegated from the top flight, and it's no surprise that some clubs are willing to take big gambles to get out of the championship. The most famous example of this is QPR, who broke spending rules on their way to promotion in 2014, racking up a wage bill of over £75 million, almost two times their £38.6 million turnover, and eventually settling on a £42 million fine with the EFL. And while this has been the most severe case of a club overspending to gain entry to the Prem, it is seen to a lesser extent across the championship. As EFL chair Rick Parry told The Athletic in 2021, by any measure, championship clubs are neither profitable or sustainable, citing the 107% wage to turnover ratio and £300 million of losses across the league reported by Deloitte in 2018-19, the season before the Covid pandemic, and the £1.3 billion worth of debt that was reported the following campaign. And in many ways, it's this mad rush to gain top flight status that has landed Derby in its current predicament. When businessman Mel Morris took sole ownership of the club in 2015, he made it his ambition to steer the club into a sustainable place in the Premier League, and immediately began a programme of unprecedented spending, with £30.7 million spent to bring players in, and nothing coming back in sales in the 2015-16 campaign. Between 2015 and 2018, Sheffield Wednesday were the only championship club not to have played in the Premier League at any point during that time to rack up a higher net spend than Derby. But the more troubling aspect was their wage bill, which according to football finance expert Kieran Maguire almost tripled in this time from £16 million to £47 million, at which point the club was spending roughly 150% of their revenue on wages. According to the Times, this saw Derby accrue losses of around £97 million for that three-year period. But it was also during this time that the club sold their home stadium Pride Park for £81 million to a separate company set up by owner Morris, a move that helped them post a profit for the 2017-18 season and bring them in line with the EFL's profitability and sustainability regulations, which permit championship clubs to record a maximum loss of £39 million over the course of three years. But while this approach was far from sustainable in the long term, it almost paid off. The Rams reached the playoffs in three of the first four seasons under Morris's ownership, with Frank Lampard the manager to take them closest to promotion in 2019. But having seen future Champions League stars like Mason Mount and Fikayo Tomori grace the Pride Park turf in an exciting campaign, the club's fortunes quickly went south. Within months, Middlesbrough, who'd missed out on the playoffs by finishing one point behind sixth place Derby, had filed a complaint to the EFL, arguing Mel Morris had cheated financial fair play regulations with the sale of the club's stadium at a time when the club was also coming under fire for the signing of Wayne Rooney on a reported £100,000 a week, a move which sparked a record-breaking new deal with betting company and shirt sponsor 32 Red, as Rooney was given the number 32 at Pride Park. 
Then in January 2020, the EFL charged Derby County for a breach of spending rules in relation to the losses they incurred between 2015 and 2018, at a time when the club's financial difficulties were really beginning to show, as players received their wages late at the turn of the year, something that was to become a worrying trend at Pride Park. The charges were eventually dismissed that August following a legal battle that cost the EFL £1 million, effectively costing each championship club £50,000 as a result, something which unsurprisingly did not go down well with a number of clubs during the first summer of the pandemic. That same summer, Sheffield Wednesday were found guilty of breaching regulations, having sold Hillsborough in a similar fashion to balance the books, and their punishment of 12 docked points, later reduced to 6, ultimately saw them relegated from the championship in 2021. Having escaped such punishments, Derby stayed up on the final day of the season, leading Rob Kuig, the owner of Wickham Wanderers who were relegated by a single point, to accuse the Rams of systematic cheating. By this point, the EFL had appealed the decision to dismiss the charges against Derby and the club was eventually fined £100,000 over the unique way they measured the value of incoming transfers, also known as amortisation, with the courts effectively ruling that it had given them an unfair advantage over rivals by allowing them to spend more in the transfer market and ordered them to rewrite their accounts for that crucial 2015 to 2018 period. They were also hit with a transfer embargo and despite being spared a retrospective points deduction, meaning they were saved from relegation while Wickham were unable to regain their place in the championship, they were eventually docked points in November in relation to their unorthodox amortisation methods. And while the club's accounting strategy under Mel Morris did at least for a while keep them out of trouble with the EFL and competitive in the championship, it eventually caught up with them. According to Morris, he invested over £200 million in the Rams, while the club was losing up to £2 million a month as a result of the pandemic. When the club entered administration in September 2021, Morris left Derby with debts totalling £60 million, almost half of which were owed to the UK tax authorities. This is a huge amount of debt for a club unable to access the kind of revenue seen in the Premier League, and following a points deduction which greatly increased the likelihood of them dropping down to League One, plus the fact the stadium is no longer owned by the club, is something that makes them much less attractive to prospective buyers. Considering all this, it's difficult to look past Mel Morris as the prime culprit for the mess at Derby County, but there are other factors at play. This time last year, the club looked set to be sold to Sheikh Khalid bin Zayed Al Nahyan, cousin of Man City owner Sheikh Mansour, before the deal collapsed following almost a year of talks and a deal in principle approved by the EFL. Considering Sheikh Khalid had previously failed in takeover bids for both Liverpool and Newcastle, the club could well be accused of naivety in entertaining his offer, but the likelihood remains that had the deal gone through, Derby would not have found themselves in such a bad place by January 2022. And as mentioned earlier, finding a new buyer has also been complicated by the legal challenges put forward by Middlesbrough and Wickham, which could end up adding an extra £40 million bill to whoever takes over. While there is an argument that Derby themselves would be liable for compensation under the same principle given they were defeated in the 2014 playoff final by the aforementioned QPR, these claims still hang over the club, leading some, including Gary Neville, to argue that for the good of the game, Middlesbrough and Wickham should withdraw their challenges. And then there is the EFL, who having relentlessly pursued Derby for their financial dealings, have also contributed to the perilous situation they have found themselves in. From the EFL's perspective, being stricter with their spending rules is for the good of the Football League, especially in the wake of cases like Bury and Macclesfield, where fans were ultimately left without a club to support. But while the EFL have, in the words of Rick Parry, changed some of the fundamental weaknesses that led to Bury, with new club owners now having to prove their funds up front, there is an argument that they are still not strong enough. If the loophole which allowed Mel Morris to sell Pride Park to his own company didn't exist, for example, then he may have been forced to put together a more sustainable financial model in his pursuit of promotion. At the time of writing, so-called crisis talks are ongoing between Derby and the EFL, while three potential buyers, including former Newcastle owner Mike Ashley, remain interested in taking over. But the situation Derby have found themselves in raises much bigger questions about how English football can avoid such disasters in the future. 
As Labour MP Alex Davis-Jones said during a recent debate in Parliament, it is further evidence that football governance is broken. These concerns have been addressed in the UK government's fan-led review of English football, which was brought forward following the European Super League debacle. As part of it, the EFL have suggested measures such as sharing television revenue more equally between the Premier League and Championship, scrapping parachute payments and instead distributing the money more evenly among clubs in the second tier, and introducing new rules that would see clubs forced to spend a maximum of 60% of their revenue on wages. The review has also called for an independent regulator to oversee financial regulation of the English game and establish new tests for directors and owners. As argued by Kieran Maguire, in terms of governance, financial distribution and protection of clubs as community assets, there are positives which can be taken through having an independent party that are not acting in self-interest. What's more, it can be argued that a future where owners don't feel the need to overspend in their efforts to gain promotion to the Premier League is not only in the best interests of the fans, but also aspiring club owners themselves. If this can be achieved, then a situation like Derby, or indeed Bury, Wigan or Sheffield Wednesday, can become a bad memory of English football's past, rather than a constant fear. So that was our take on events at Derby County, but what is the biggest problem you think is facing English football at the moment and how can it be fixed? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and if you want to see more, please subscribe to Football Daily as we put videos like this out every single day. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.